Ready for the video? Yes. Let's do it. If you get married, you suffer that. If you get married, you suffer that. If you don't have what children, you suffer that. No people like that. Only yes. moves whichever way his software is written. You are the Interesting software. Interesting concept there. That you're trying to handle. It's like a sim society. game. <laughs> there That's the kind of person you are right now, isn't it? Excessive yeah. indulgence in yep. physical yep. pleasures. These are all the ways yeah, you're trying to I mean, avoid the torment of the intellect for some time. Right. Yes. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. all the internal. There's a lot of thoughts in there. I, I really, honestly, I feel like it's like a jumping off point because like, Present practice. What's conscious? This is Vish and... I'm Kat. And today we'll be responding to Sadhguru's video on... The end of suffering. My name is Vish. I'm an aspiring yogi. Love all things meditation, yoga, and wisdom based. Uh, really thankful to have Kat here on the show. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kat. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm a model in the Austin area and uh, my hobbies include all things artistic. I'm excited to be here. Awesome, thanks for being here. And uh, real quickly, what does suffering mean to you? <laughs> uh, big word. Yeah, big word. Lots of experiences. Don't like it. Have a lot of thoughts about it. Can't put it into a single sentence. That's okay, well, let's hear what Sadhguru has to say about it. Let's get into the video. So technology, because the technology is subjective. Now the technologies that you're handling are objective technologies. Now I'm talking about a subjective technology. It's about you. Here, you are the software concept there. that you're trying to handle. Fundamentally, if you look at yourself, right now you are operating according to the software that you have become. Please see. What kind of family you were born in, yeah. what kind of parents, what kind of school, what kind of friends, what kind of Very atmosphere, true. what kind of religion, what it's kind like of society. Game. <laughs> there That's the kind of person you are right now, isn't it? So, software was written into you haphazardly by anybody and everybody that you came in touch with. Not by trained professionals, <laughs> just about anybody who came. Not trained putting professionals, something. I love that. Yeah, true. <laughs> Wherever you went, somebody stuffed something into your head. You had no choice from where to receive, where not to receive. If you say, I don't like this man, I don't want to receive anything from him, you will receive much more from him than anybody else. That's how this one is. So right now, the very way you think, feel, understand and act in your life is just the way your software is, isn't it? Yes? The very way you move your body is the way your software is. I want you to understand this. It is so deeply conditioned. If you are somebody you know very well, somebody who, whom you are very familiar with is walking one mile away, you can't recognize anything about that person, but just the way he moves, you know it is this person, isn't it? Because the very way his body moves… Yes, no people like that. …only yes. <laughs> moves whichever way his software is written. But this software was written unconsciously. Now, if we want some freedom to happen, if we want some transformation to happen, we have to create a little space between you and your software. You're too identified with it, you're just lost in it, that's all you become. Now you have to create a little distance. You've heard of a word called Buddha? I like that. Me too. If I say Buddha, probably you always think of Gautama the Buddha. You know Gautama him? is not the what? only Buddha. The Buddha he's talking That's about? not his name. Mm -hmm. He became a Buddha. There have been thousands of Buddhas and they still are. What Buddha means is, Bhu means Buddhi or the intellect. Cut up now. <laughs> da means Dada, one who is a bow. So he's saying that there's actually many one Buddhas. One who is a bow is intellect, right, is yes. a Buddha. Once yeah. you're a bow, the intellectual process, suffering is finished in your life because all suffering is manufactured there in your logical mind. When you are into your intellect, when you are stuck in your intellect, you are a non-stop suffering human being. Wherever you put, 
you have a way of creating some kind of suffering. Your fears, your anxieties, your tensions, your stress. Just see, people are capable of suffering just about anything. Yes? Isn't it so? People are capable of suffering just about anything in the world. Please see. If you are not educated, you will suffer that. If you get educated, you suffer that. If you don't find a job, you'll suffer that. If you find a job, you suffer that. True. If you're not yeah, married, you'll true. suffer that. If you get married, you suffer that. If you don't have what children, you suffer that. If you have children, you suffer that. It's suffering it? everything. People are capable of suffering just about anything. This is the nature of the intellect. Once you are into the intellect, this is how life is. If you are below the intellect, you won't suffer so much. Animals don't suffer as much as you suffer. Physical things, if they're That's taken care of, they're quite and, okay. And very true too. They don't have the kind of Absolutely. suffering that human beings know, isn't it? So if you're below the intellect, you don't suffer so much. Like you asked that question. If you're below the… if you're above the intellect, you're a Buddha. If you're below the intellect, maybe we can call you Buddha. <laughs> if you're in the intellect, non-stop suffering. Wow. Oh my God. So, to avoid suffering, people are inventing many ways to go below the intellect. Excessive eating, <laughs> alcohol, indul you know, excessive yeah. indulgence in yep. physical yep. pleasures. These are all the ways yeah, you're way trying to, to I mean, avoid the torment of the intellect for some time. You get drunk and you feel good for a few hours, but then life will catch up with you with more intensity. It won't let you go. <laughs> now, this being which was below the intellect somehow evolved into the intellect. The only way out for this is to evolve beyond the intellect. So, the fundamentals of yoga, the technology is how to go beyond this. So, how to do it now? Subjective technologies cannot be explored in uncommitted atmospheres. You need a very committed focused atmosphere, otherwise it will not be in your grasp. It's not a teaching, it's a method. To implement a method, you need to be in a certain way, in a certain level of commitment, in a certain level of receptivity, otherwise it doesn't work. Because, see now if you go into a chemistry laboratory, you take this chemical, this chemical, if you put it into it, something happens. But if you're not willing to put it into it, if you sit here and think and think and think, what will, what will this do, what will that do, you will come to all kinds of wrong conclusions. Till you put it there, you won't know. Maybe it'll explode in your face, but till you put it there, you will not know what it is about. But now, you are the chemical, you are the chemist and you are the experimental process. Everything is you. Now you need a different kind of laboratory, otherwise it doesn't work. If it was objective, we could have just written a book and given it to you. But because it's subjective, you have to be taken step by step because it's a completely different dimension of perception and experience altogether. But is it possible for me? It is possible for every human being. Internally, all of us are equally capable. We are not capable in different ways. All of us are capable of joy, isn't it? Yes. If you have been joyful for one moment, that means you are capable of joy, isn't it? It is just that you are unable to stay there. That's the whole thing. There is no true. human being on the yeah, planet who has never been one joyful. Little moment, Every capable. human being has been joyful at some point. That means he is capable of joy. It is just that he is unable to stay there. So he needs a technology as to how to maintain the atmosphere within himself. It's possible. Alrighty, Kat, let's talk about this. What do you think? There's a lot of thoughts in there. I, I really liked what he had to say. Honestly, I feel like it's like a jumping off point because like I'm, I'm uh, thinking so many things right now. I'm trying to sort it out. <laughs> That's okay. Let's, uh, let's start with one. Like what's, what's the first thing that's uh, in that list of stuff? Um, well, I guess I'm, I'm right where we ended too, like everyone is capable of joy. It's easy to think like 
no, like some people are really depressed or clinically depressed or have horrible lives. But if you have one moment of joy, that means you're capable and you just need a method of staying there. I like that. That was well put. I think you nailed it right on the dot there. And uh, yeah, maybe it's, I mean, again, not to say this and speak this uh, for everyone, right? Because I'm sure there are certain people that maybe are clinically in mm -hmm. certain conditions. So uh, not to say that it's going to be easy, but uh, I would say this actually, this is like a little sidetrack of a topic, but I think today, and this is what I've come to realize, whether it's being anxious, being depressed, being stressed, being whatever, worried, these words get used so often, it almost has become, I think, like a mantra, right? <laughs> and I feel like if you tell yourself, I'm anxious, uh, 365 days of the year, and you're not really anxious, don't you think you'll get it? Yeah, it's Same true. thing with like being depressed or sad or even happy to an extent? Yeah, our, our emotions are absolutely trainable. And if we treat ourselves a certain way or believe we're a certain way, that's how we're gonna be. Exactly, and even just like a small example uh, for me, I mean, I think, I don't know if you've experienced this yourself, but waking up, I used to wake up in all sorts of feelings and moods, whether it's sometimes being tired or whatever, right? It's just like a very, uh, like alarm type, you get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. But I started doing this thing, it's been about a year now, if not more, and the first thing I do as soon as I wake up, before I get out of bed, I will reflect on the previous day and think of seven distinct things that I'm grateful for. Mm. And I kid you not, I've literally like, I'm waking up, it's like become a, a trained model now where I wake up being grateful. Like it's just automatic now. Um, so it's a very possible wow. thing, the way you said. Yeah, I love that. That's awesome. I wanna try that. <laughs> yeah. Start even tonight. I, even re I would recommend it as a nighttime routine too, mm -hmm. right before you go to sleep. Um, or as soon as you hit the bed so you don't forget, just yeah. say three things, don't do seven, three things, yeah. and then do three things in the morning. I would definitely recommend this to you all too. Um, but yeah, even thinking, even Sudhir talks about himself, even for the clinical levels of people that are in that states, it's actually quite possible to get them out. Although at the same time, it's not gonna be easy, right. but it's possible. I think the key here is the possibility. Mm -hmm. um, but what else did you think in terms of the suffering topic itself? Oh, yes, yes, it's true. Like I. Loved when he was talking about how we suffer about everything, mm -hmm. you know, even the things that we want or the things that we normally would enjoy, we find a way to suffer about it. Humans are so accepting of suffering. <laughs> like, it's become normalized, it right? It is, yeah. And I love the way you mentioned that as well as what he says, which is, for example, whether you have a husband, people suffer, people without a husband suffer, people with kids suffer, people without kids suffer, people with a job suffer, people without a job suffer. Yeah. So the key is to realize that suffering is, is not really the external thing. Right, yes, yeah. It's mm -hmm. all the internal, mm -hmm. and so, it's very possible, as he says, and as you amazingly said before, you can train yourself, um, you can create joy within yourself. Very possible. Yeah, it's absolutely true, I agree. Any uh, last closing thoughts about the topic itself or anything else you want to add? Uh, no, I just, I mean, I think that when it comes down to it, like have, knowing that we have the power to shape our joy and to get past our suffering is amazing. And I, I love that. That's the first step. Mm -hmm. And uh, a quick note here, even for, and this is what I've come to realize, in fact, it's a meditation that he has, and a part of it, uh, without giving too much away, is essentially doing this kind of chant where you tell yourself, I am not the body and I'm not even the mind. Mm -hmm. And this, in turn, will help you create that distance as he talks about. Yes, yeah, the space, right. The space, so you're not gonna, you're not gonna be like disconnected, you're still connected, right. but you're creating that distance. Mm -hmm. And that distance, in turn, will help you realize that that pain, even if you have physical pain or even mental pain, you can create the distance to the point where it doesn't affect you. In fact, they actually did a study uh, where they this was like a different form of meditation, but I think, I forget the form of it. They talked about how they had a group of, of participants doing uh, 30 minutes of meditation a day, um, had one group, and then the other group did nothing. They were just a control group. And what they found, and, and don't quote me exactly for the science behind it, I'm just telling you what I remember. Yeah. Uh, what they found was a group that meditated when exposed to some sort of pain stimuli actually experienced the pain higher. But there is the pain receptor and there's the response or reactionary receptor which is like the suffering or like the mental part of like feeling sad or hurt 
that's the response, right, the reaction. They noticed that that level was actually significantly lower than the other group. So Interesting. this stuff works as a point. Um, <laughs> but I want to thank uh, you, Kat, for being here. You uh, really share some really cool insight there. And uh, I want to uh, really just take a second to appreciate you. And I would love to have you all show her some love. And I'll let the viewers know where they can find you. Oh, yeah. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing some of my modeling work, I'm on Instagram, ewyn.modeling. Um, is my account, so uh, feel free. To, it's a private account, so you'll have to request a follow, and then I'll accept it. So that's the only thing. <laughs> that's okay, and uh, all of her stuff will be down below. And if you have any other video reaction requests, or topic requests, or guest requests, you can also comment down below. And with that, make a great day. Take this joyful and stay conscious. Awesome job, Katie. Great. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks.